Good afternoon, folks, and welcome to another educational video from Blue Sky Trading, where our goal is to teach you everything that you need to know to be a successful trader. Today, we're going to be talking about how to put together a risk management plan for trading the stock market. We're going to go over why risk management plan is important, why it's essential to your trading success, and how to develop one for your own portfolio. Let's start off with this quote. I love this quote from Steve Burns, and that is, the majority of short-term trading results are random. In the long term, money ends up with those that can trade and manage risk. This is so true. In the short term, if you look at any chart, I mean, price action looks random. You could be up or down on, on any given day. But over the long term, if, if you have a good trading strategy, and more importantly, if you can manage risk, you will be successful over time. It, it, it really is that simple. So let's look at why risk management. Most retail traders, when they get into trading, they're, they're so focused on the potential profit on a trade that they neglect to consider the risk that comes with getting into that trade. So, I mean, I'll be the first to admit, risk management isn't a very exciting topic, but I will say it's absolutely critical to your success. I always say that the number one rule in trading is don't lose your money. And the number two rule in trading is never forget rule number one. Most good traders, and, and I'm even talking like, you know, professional traders are only profitable on maybe 60% of their trades. If, if they're really good and if they have, you know, a really, um, a really tuned in trading strategy and, and, and if you're in a really strong bull market, you know, so, so in other words, if everything is aligning just perfect, maybe you can get that up to, you know, 70, 75%. But realistically, if you count on 60% of your trades being profitable, you're actually doing quite well. So then you might ask, how am I gonna make any money if only 60% of my trades are profitable? Well, here's how you do it. On trades that are working in your favor and on trades that are profitable, you make sure to hold on to those trades long enough that you can have large gains. On the flip side of that, on trades that go against you and on trades where, um, say you, you, know, you followed your trading strategy, you got in at just the right time, but it's just one of those ones where, where it's not going to work out and the stock starts going against you. The key is to have small losses. So if you think about this from a, from a big picture, kind of long-term, you know, long-term portfolio, if you're correct 60% of your time, but on your profitable trades, if you're making 20% and on your losing trades, say you're only losing, you know, anywhere from three to 5%, then you're making pretty good money. So, to result in a large net gain in your account balance, you wanna make sure that you have big gains and small losses. And the way to do that is with risk management. Now, large losses are, are extremely difficult to correct. So just consider this example. Let's say, you know, for argument's sake, you have an account with a $100,000 balance. If you lose 20% of that account balance, that brings you down to $80,000, right? Well, just to get back to even, you don't need to make 20%, you need to make 25% just to get to back, you know, just to get back to where you started from before you even think about making any kind of profits. So, significant losses like that are extremely difficult to make back. You can lose money in in the blink of an eye in the stock market, but it is it is difficult. It takes it takes a lot of work and a lot of um, you know, a lot of effort and time in order to make money in the market. So you don't want to just give up those profits easily. The other side of that is large losses are very emotional and they tend to lead to more losses. When you have a big loss, you tend to take higher risks because now you're trying to make that money back. And in order to make that money back, you need to trade bigger. And by trading bigger, you're taking bigger risk. And it, you know, it's just something that spirals out of control where, where big losses turn into even bigger losses. And before you know it, I mean, you could be down 50% in your portfolio. Not having risk management would cause wild swings in your account balance. I mean, you could be, you know, you could be from up 20% to down 20%. If, if you're not managing your risk properly, then your losses will be just as big or even bigger than your gains. And, and your balance is going to be all over the place. This affects your self-confidence and, and it makes it very difficult to stay 
with your trading strategy. When you're having big swings in your account, you're going to start to doubt your strategy. You're going to start to deviate from it. And not only, like I mentioned before, you'll be taking bigger risks, but now maybe you won't even be having the right entries. You know, you'll be you'll be trying to get into stocks maybe a little early to try and front run a, a move or, you know, you'll, you'll start deviating from your trading strategy because you want to try and make money quickly. And the more you do that, most likely what will happen is you'll end up with even bigger losses. A risk management plan is really required in order to make consistent profits over the long term. You know, like we went, like we saw in that quote, in the short term, the stock market is very random. From from one day to the next, I mean, you could have a big up day one day and, and a you know big pullback the next day. But over the long term, if you want to be profitable, you need to have a good risk management plan in addition to your trading strategy. The risk management plan is really what separates the traders from the gamblers. The gamblers just want to make huge profits. You know, the gamblers are, are thinking, you know, I'm going to get rich in the stock market. Well, it's unfortunately, that's not the way the stock market works. The stock market isn't, isn't a get rich quick scheme. It's, it's a great vehicle for building wealth over the long term, but you're not going to get rich, you know, in a year or in a couple years. Having that risk management plan is what's going to keep you in the game and it's going to keep you, uh, making those profits year after year after year. So let's go over some general rules for a risk management plan. Now, my rule of thumb is you never want to risk more than 2% of your total portfolio balance on any one trade. You always, always, always want to use stops. They do work. Now, some people are going to say, well, stops don't work because... I get stopped out, and as soon as I get stopped out, the stock reverses and runs up without me. Sure, that, that's going to happen sometimes. That happens even to the best of traders. But more often than not, the stop will protect you from further losses. You might miss out on a couple gains by getting stopped out, but there'll be more times where you're glad that you got stopped out because the stock continues to fall. Now, what's really important is that the location of the stop must be dictated by the chart and your trading strategy. The location of the stop cannot be based on how much you're willing to lose. Your stop isn't really, I mean, you could you can make the argument it is, but your, your stop really isn't part of your risk management plan. Your stop is part of your, your trading strategy. Your stop is based on the technicals of the chart. The way you manage risk is with your position size. Once you know your entry and once you know where your stop is, based on your strategy. Now, one thing that you, you always need to be aware of, you, you always need to know what is your total portfolio risk? In other words, what is your total loss if all of your positions were to get stopped out at one time? You know, so we talked about here that 2% is, is kind of the rule of thumb on, on the most that you'd want to risk on any one trade. You could make the argument even for 1%. I'd, I'd say anywhere from one to 2% um, is what you'd want to risk on any one trade. But you need to be cognizant also of how many trades you have on at the same time, how many new trades you have on at the same time that all have that 1% to 2% risk. And what is the total portfolio risk if they all do get stopped out, You know, say if we have a, a broad market sell-off? So let's, let's actually um, go to a chart now and we'll take a look at a, at a real example of Tesla. All right, so here we got Tesla up on the screen. Uh, this is from back in kind of the September, October, November time period uh, from 2020. So actually, if you check out our video on trading strategies and how to build a trading strategy, this is one example that we covered on how we got into this trade and, and where the entry would be. So I'm not gonna go over that part of it. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna go over how to manage the risk once you're in this trade already. So for this trade, our entry was right here on November 18th on, th on this move up above this trend line. So for the purposes of this example, let's assume that, you know, let's say, let's say we bought towards the, the high of this day. You know, maybe we didn't see it right away and, and we bought it, you know, uh, towards the end of the day. So let, let's use around 162 as our entry point for this trade. Now for the stop, again, like I mentioned, you want to pick your stop based on the chart, not based on how much you want to lose. So for an example like this, I would put my stop right below these moving averages kind of roughly in the middle of, of this uh, trading consolidation period.
period here. So for the purposes of this, let's say your stop, you know, the realistic area for the stop would be right around $138, somewhere in that, in that, uh, in that area. Now, one thing I would recommend is never place your stop at an even number, like 138. The reason for that is um, a, a lot of, you know, algorithms or, or trading programs, trading softwares, they'll, they'll use even numbers like that as their buy and sell points. So you want to always avoid using an even number because that's those are the situations where you know you could get stopped out right at 138 dollars and then the next day or you know even sometimes the next in the next few minutes or in the next hour the stock reverses and starts going up again so instead of using 138 you always want to use something just a little bit below that so say like you know 137.87 or 137.93 you know something like that um, as opposed to using an even number all right, so let's go through the numbers on our Tesla example. So like we said, our buy or our entry point was on November 18th, 2020 at about $162. Our stop, we wanna put it just below 138. So in this, in this example, let's go with 137.87 as our stop. So that gives us a total risk of 162 minus the 137.87 divided by 162 of 14.9%. So that is a little higher than than I would typically like to see on on a trade like this. Um, you know, ideally you'd like to keep your risk below ten percent. Um, really, if you could, around five percent, that would really be ideal. But um, for a trade like this, this is reasonable. The only thing you're going to have to do when you have a, a fourteen or fifteen percent risk is it's going to make your position size a little smaller, obviously, than if you had a five percent risk. So running through the numbers. Let's assume that we're doing this for a portfolio um, with a balance of $100,000. So if we want to only risk 1% of that total portfolio balance, that would be a risk of $1,000. So basically, if we're saying that we, don't wanna, we do not want to lose more than $1,000 on this trade, let's figure out, well, how, much, how many shares can we buy or what is the total amount that we can put into this trade? So you would take that $1,000 and divide by what your total loss or total risk would be of $24.13 per share. And that gives you a total of 41 shares that you'd be able to buy. Now, if you wanna allow a 2% maximum loss, or again, that's 2% of your total portfolio value, that would be $2,000, then that would work out to basically double at 82 shares. So that would be the most that you could buy and not lose more than either $1,000 or $2,000 respectively, depending on which risk profile you feel comfortable for this trade. So here's some other points to consider when you're, when you're doing this. Um, I mentioned before, you have to remember to take into account your total portfolio risk of all open positions. So in this example, we looked at Tesla. So basically we looked at it as, as if that's your only trade that you have open right now, or, or at least your only trade that is a new trade and has that type of risk. Um, remember, wh when you first enter a trade, that's when you have your greatest risk. Once your trade become, starts to get profitable and you start moving your stops up, I mean, once your stop gets to break even, you've, you know, now you've eliminated your risk. Now, now basically you don't have, you know, any risk to your initial principle. Your only risk now is giving back profit. So always when you open a new position, that's your biggest risk. You, I would say for a portfolio of, you know, again, let's say we're using $100,000, you wouldn't want to have any more than four to six positions at any one time. Um, there's a few reasons for that. One is that any more than that just becomes difficult to manage unless if you're doing this full time, you know, if you're, if you're doing this part time, you know, in, in the evenings or, you know, as, as a, in addition to your day job, having anything more than four to six positions just really makes it too difficult to, to pay enough attention to each one. Um, that you need to to be successful. And and also, you don't want to put all those positions on in the same day. You know, let's say you, you know, you get a you get a day where, um, you know, you were watching a bunch of stocks, they were setting up, they were they were meeting the conditions of your of your trading strategy. And then one day you get all these alerts that, you know, you, you get a bunch of breakouts. Well, don't buy all of them. Because again, your greatest risk is on the day you enter. So if you take, you know, four or five or six positions all in the same day, you've now taken a pretty big risk. And, and if you get a turnaround the next day or a pullback the next day in all of those positions, and or even worst case, if you get stopped out of all those positions the next day, I mean, you can take a pretty big hit. 
So you never want to put too many new positions on in one day. You know, if you're using this example of four to six total, I'd say you probably don't want to put more than, you know, two or maybe at absolute most three position, three new positions on um, in any given day. And um, and also, you know, consider the overall market conditions compared to your total risk. You know, are you in a bull market versus a bear market? Are we in a sideways market? I mean, if we're in a really strong bull market and and breakouts are really working well or, or whatever your trading strategy is, is really working well. OK, then maybe you do want to put three trades on, you know, all in the same day if your alerts get hit. But if we're in a risky market, if we're in a sideways market or or even worse, if we're in a bear market, you really want to be careful how many new positions you put on in any one day. So that pretty much covers what we have um, as far as risk management plans go. Uh, if you have any questions, you can post those down in the comments section. Um, also, please do check out our, our other videos. Um, like I mentioned before, when we were looking at Tesla, we do have a really good video on how to put a trading strategy together. Um, that goes over you know, the reasons why you need a trading strategy, what it is, and how to customize one for yourself. Um, and we're also going to have a video on the, the psychology of trading and you definitely don't want to miss that one. That one's going to be, uh, we're going to go over some really good topics in, in that video. So please check those out. Um, if you do like this content, hopefully you've learned something from these videos, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and we'll see you next time.